Hey everybody, here's a part two video that I didn't plan on doing, but I was too lazy to change the first one to tell you I was doing it, so just deal with it. Uh, in my last video, we used a new trick called the power rule to derive marginal revenue and marginal cost. And we did all that stuff and it was great, but the video was too long and so I didn't want to go any farther without, you know, starting fresh. I wanted to give you some idea of where those things come from. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about using our power rule. We're gonna use some calculus to maximize profit. Z there, S there, I don't know. So profit is funny because if you were to graph it, it would look something like this, only smoother and nicer, where for a while increasing more quantity increases your profit, and then at some point increasing more quantity means the price falls faster and you just start losing money. And if it's a nice arc, then to maximize profit, we obviously want something up here at the top. And so we're gonna look for this one point right up here where the slope is zero, right? So here the slope is positive, sorry, over here, the slope is positive and steep. Over here it's positive and not as steep, positive and less steep, until it flattens out at the top, and then it goes negative, as it starts going back down. By finding that one point where the slope is zero, we will be able to max, we will maximize our profit. So whenever we want to get a slope of zero, that means what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the derivative of our profit function with respect to Q, that'll be the slope of the profit line, and we're gonna set that equal to zero, whatever it is. Now, my example in the last video gave us a price curve of P equals 12 minus Q and a, marg a total cost curve of one half Q squared plus 50. That was it, right? Yeah. All right, and profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost, which is equal to P times Q minus total cost which is equal to 12 minus Q times Q minus 1 half Q squared plus 50, which is 12 Q minus Q squared minus 1 half Q squared minus 50. Now I am well aware you know, before you panic that I'm stopping at this point, I know that I could combine these two things. I don't want to right now. It won't change the math if I fail to do that. What I have now is helpful though, because I have, I'm sorry, I have an equation for total revenue and I have a different equation for total cost. And I like being able to see those differently. It might make the calculus a little clunkier to see that, but it helps with the econ. So let's do some profit maximizing here. If I want to maximize profit, I'm going to take the derivative of the profit function with respect to Q and set that thing equal to zero. Well, let's see, the derivative of 12Q, uh, I guess I'll write the whole thing. Derivative of 12Q, power rule, 12 times the power of one, so still just 12. Power of one goes down to zero, so that Q just drops off. Minus 2Q. Hey, there's the marginal revenue function that we already solved for in the last video, way up here. 
and then minus 2 times a half is 1, so just minus q. And then the 50 doesn't get anything. And I'm going to set all of that equal to 0. Now, what do we get here? That's 12 minus 2q equals q. Whoa, man. That's marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That's where the condition comes from. It comes from using our calculus to try to find the top of the profit function. And so, let's see, we can actually solve for the right Q now. But 12 equals 3Q. The optimal quantity for maximizing profit happens at 4. So on this graph, you put a 4 there. All right, if you want to figure out pricing and profits and all that stuff, watch my other video on monopoly profit maximization. This was just helping you to see where the marginal revenue equals marginal cost condition comes from and how we can use our power rule in my class. Hope that was helpful to you. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck.